Hi again, Greg Bell, the News Tribune here at Seahawk headquarters in Renton on a Sunday. Happy Sunday to you. JT Barrett, the newest Seahawk quarterback, was on the field today practicing in position drills after signing a contract yesterday. He did not do any team drills in his first practice. He's here, of course, because Geno Smith had a cyst removed from his knee after Smith started the preseason opener Thursday night against Denver. Went three for nine. Had the cyst removed. Pete Carroll said that Smith may be able to be back in time for Sunday night's second preseason game at Minnesota, but that quote, that might be pushing it. Barrett, I'd be surprised if he doesn't play. I'd Maybe just a weak thing here, but he's going to get a chance, I would think, in this offense, which asks the quarterback to move more and use Russell Wilson's talents on the run more than a more stationary on-time offense for a quarterback at the New Orleans Saints, where Barrett was his first two NFL years. Barrett made that point after practice, saying that with Drew Brees in New Orleans, it was timing three-step, five-step drops, getting rid of the ball on time, and not much quarterback movement beyond that here. Of course, extending plays is Russell Wilson's forte, and it sounds like JT Barrett's pretty curious of how he might fare in an offense like this. I would think that Carroll wants to see that. Carroll said that he liked Barrett way back to his Ohio State days for all the big-time winning he did there, and I think that he's going to play Sunday night as the third quarterback back behind Russell Wilson and Paxton Lynch against the Vikings. I asked Barrett what he learned in his two years under Drew Brees, and he laughed and said, how much time do you got? And then he went on to say mainly about preparation and how Drew Brees did everything the same way every day in a routine and the importance of routine in preparing for NFL games week in and week out. Ziggy Ansah still working on the side, the top pass rusher the Seahawks signed in the offseason. Pete Carroll said that he is still a ways away a bit away from getting back to practice for the first time since that shoulder surgery ended his time in Detroit. He said the hope now is that Ansa can get back to practice, quote, a couple weeks before the first game. That would mean by the end of month's end. The first game is September 8th against Minnesota. So if Ansa's not on the field by the end of August, he's a little behind schedule in the Seahawks' mind. Carroll said that the shoulder strength is almost there, but not quite yet there at what it needs to be. He's in on all the mental reps and meetings and walkthrough practices in the afternoon after the trainings that are out here in the morning, but that they haven't seen him in firing off the ball and actually doing football things yet. Keep an eye on by the end of the month whether Ziggy Ansa is on the field or not yet practicing. If he's not, that would put his chance of playing in the opener in question. Of course, the Seahawks pass rush needs him a lot. Speaking of that pass rush, Carroll after practice talked a lot about second year man Rasheem Green, his growth, showing speed, showing the ability to play outside at end on early downs and inside as a pass rusher on third downs, much like Michael Bennett used to do. He said that Carroll said that the Seahawks are really excited to see how much growth the 20-year-old Green has made from year one to year two. His third-round pick out of USC. A couple injury, other injury items. Jacob Hollis to the tight end, still not back to practice, but Carroll says that he thinks he has a chance to play against the Vikings Sunday. Hollister was emerging at tight end until he got a groin injury last week. Shaquem Griffin did not practice today. He had a sore, bruised knee. Uh, Carroll, uh, Carroll does think he may be able to play on Sunday as well. J.D. McKissick is day-to-day -day to come back. And fellow running back C.J. Procise, I probably don't have to tell you, and no surprise is hurt again. Carroll thinks both Procise and McKissick have a chance to play Sunday as well. What did I see on the field today? I saw another good day from Jamar Taylor, the veteran seven-year veteran cornerback making plays in the end zone again knocking down passes that was part of 14 plays that Russell Wilson ran in the red zone most of those inside the 10-yard line the defense stopped them 12 times one was an interception by Shalom Luani when Russell Wilson was trying to target Gary Jennings the rookie wide receiver over the middle of the end zone 12 stops in 14 red zone plays is not good for the offense and you may ask, was that good defense or bad offense? It was bad offense to me. They started the red zone drill running crowd noise in with the music they always blare. And then after three plays, they cut out the crowd noise because the offense looked confused. They were disjointed. Jerron Brown one time went the wrong way on a route. Russell Wilson threw outside. Brown ran inside. They were lined up wrong. They looked a mess, actually, the first few plays of that red zone. So they cut the crowd noise out and just went with the music. It really didn't help in the results of defense winning the day in red zone scrimmaging. Seahawks practice tomorrow and Tuesday. They take Wednesday off, then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, they leave for Minnesota 
Sunday night's second preseason game. Carroll made it clear that Russell Wilson, Wayne Brown, Rabbit McDougal, guys like that that did not play in the opener, veteran starters who did not play in the preseason opener, will play Sunday night, and they're, quote, dying to get in there and play. Carroll said he liked his new system of veterans not playing the first game because it got a long look at guys like Paxton Lynch and others. Jamarco Jones, the second-year left tackle, played every snap, one of eight players in the NFL to play every snap in the preseason opener. And he also likes the fact that guys like Wilson and Blaine Brown are now chomping at the bit to get out there to play in the second one. All my coverage is at thenewstribune.com as always, and you can follow on Twitter at GBellSeattle. Thanks for watching.